are you doing today, Rob? I'm doing great. I'm feeling fresh. I must say, last night, the big reveal was probably one of the most fun nights I've had at the mural show so far. Well, that makes me very happy to hear that. I hope everybody that came had a really good time and enjoyed kind of the new vibe we're trying to put out there and, you know, keeping things exciting and different. No, I really kind of like how the vibe carries over to even your booth here. I mean, you've got a very different take on it. I mean, having grown up in the, the industry yourself, right? Like, you could have done a continuation of what your dad's doing, and, in, and instead you've taken that as sort of like a trampoline and go, Pium! and and the sort of modern style in conjunction with, you know, old mining lamps and the history, I think it's really cool. I couldn't agree more and you know my dad gave me a great springboard in this as a, as a kid growing up and that really inspired me to get into geology yeah. uh, which kind of led me in that other direction as you're talking about and uh, you know my other company Big Arc Exploration being a geologic consulting firm being able to travel all over the world see rocks collect minerals not often quite like this but <laughs> You know that's what we search for, um, and uh, and and really being able to kind of tie it all together in, in the full circle of, of minerals, ore minerals, seeing them as specimens, and mm -hmm. really kind of pulling that full spectrum together. You know, especially in golds. I love golds. So, some of my recent scores that uh, you know, as these came out, I guess it was three years ago, two years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, somewhere in there. Um, yeah, I had the opportunity to see a lot of them as they came out, and kind of get to handpick some of the better crystals and, and been building a suite around that. And still when I'm at the shows, if I can find one and it really kind of meets my criteria of having some cool crystallography, um, as well as good size, I kind of like things to be at least over that half ounce and up and you yeah. know, where you can hold it and really feel that You can feel it, it's, weight. yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's oh, wow. I love these inverted hopper growths. I really love the luster combination. It really sets off the hopper. Well, so it's interesting. These golds, a lot of them were incredibly lustrous. They were yeah. very bright. And I'm, you know, a lot of that has to do with the way they're prepared and cleaned. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you'll notice about the suite that I've stuck with, outside of them being big crystals, is I've, I've really honed in on that kind of matte finish. I, I, I feel like that's a, they don't seem as overly uh, prepared in chemicals and it's kind of unique from that fine to, to get that matte finish and I really think that's neat. It really now, sets the, them apart. Yeah, and one of the other cool things about these crystals is they have been identified now to have the trapezohedron gold crystals. Oh. Um, and so that's another been big focus of what I've been looking for. And so, so this one here is a good example of the small little crystal there is a nice trapezohedron where you can really still see the good sharp crystal structure. Now that's something that I've been looking for specifically out of this find because it's really really hard to identify and mm -hmm. find and actually I didn't really know much about it until you know the, the provenance of it in the collectible specimen industry until I had showed some of these golds to uh, to Terry Wallace and he kind of schooled me on how to properly identify yeah. it and recognize it in some of these crystalline golds. This one is one of the sharpest Best trapezohedron crystals out of the fine, and I'm very, very excited about this. Dang. I mean, you can really see it. Yeah, so if you orient it this way, which most people want to look at it like that, mm -hmm. but the trapezohedron crystal structure really becomes apparent when you see it here, and you can orient your eye with that flat edge, and you can start to see the kind of soccer ball finish to it. I really like how the, the matte luster on these really allows you to better analyze and look at the yeah. crystal structure because you can really focus on the different faces. You can see those sharp crystalline faces mm -hmm. and you can see the breaks and exactly how it all kind of came together. Um, and so these are, these are something, again, like I said, I'm very excited about. Uh, I've been adding them to my collection as quick as I can find them uh, yeah. if, they're, if they have this kind of caliber and quality. No, and I... I you know, you have had access to such amazing Brazilian minerals because of, you know, your dad and the connections that you've made there. And I like how you have, like with your company, you've put your own twist on it by really focusing on finding, you know, the finest, but also like scientifically interesting, you know, specimens as well. And gathering them not only for sales, but also because you enjoy them and you get obvious excitement and exactly, pleasure out of them. Exactly, yes, yes. I mean, minerals are kind of what the make 
make the world go around, I guess. Is how yeah, I'm pretty like sure how it works. It. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, it's great to have those things come together. I recently had that come together, yeah. and I came across a really cool collection from the old home state gold mine. Really? Yes. I didn't think there was many specimens that came out of there. I don't know if there are. From my knowledge, I've never seen many prior to this. I had seen a couple. Um, throughout some of the museums out there in Homestake and some of the old geologists that worked at the mine would have an occasional pyrite or, you know, maybe a quartz cluster, but nothing major. So to come across this collection was bizarre. And uh, it was really cool because the collection itself was all collected by a geologist and he hand labeled everything, what stope he got it from, what level, 3850 level, you know, stope 21, wow. and went into all the detail. He had things lab tested, I have the full reports with it. Um, as well as old mining artifacts, uh, you know, a George Hurst deposit slip and, and things like that. So as, a, as someone who hunts for met ore deposits uh, for a living, you know, th this was like that perfect, you know, juxtaposition of geology and specimens. And, and, you know, it's one of those things where like a mineral specimen can tell you a lot about the deposit. And if you have it like properly you know, identified as to where it is, you can use that as a tool exactly. to work with as well. And that's, and, and there's also the history aspect that's like very well documented where you can see like, okay, this is where the miners took time, or this miner took time to collect and to note that. And when you put that together, you get that beautiful sort of collaboration between history and, and that's it. Geology and mineral collecting, and it's just all these different passions well, meeting. And that geologist from 1959 who clearly shared those same passions, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and that's that's kind of cool to be able to, you know, in a way connect to that geologist and and be on the front lines of that now, and and still have that deep connection through specimens. Exactly. So, so what do you have back there? I'll grab you a couple that are pretty unique to bring out. Perfect. Thank you. This is really, really, really unique from the deposit. And this is the best one. Now, you can see the intense blue luster. Yeah. And as a geologist would, they'd be curious about that. So the original label, he had it labeled as a, as a blue tarnish, okay? Oh, it's from the 3800 level, blue tarnish. Yep. And it's over the calcites and or anchorites. Yeah, and I, I read that the same way you did, over calcites and anchorites, yeah. but then it dawned on me, I just needed to flip the label over. Oh! And he had later went back and done the lab analysis That's on this. That's molybdenite coating? And it's molybdenite coating on the pyrites, and when you actually look at the vein, you can really see that. You can see the clear pyrite on the quartz vein, and then it's just coated with molybdenum, giving it that incredible luster and shine. Okay, total nerd moment here. <laughs> That is so cool. And I really so, love the fact that he took the time to go get it tested, yep. rather than just, you know, settling with, okay, it's a blue tarnish. It's a blue tarnish. Uh, okay, he went and he put in that extra effort to and figure that, out exactly what. That it is. wasn't as as common back then, right? No. Like now, in what I do as a geologist, we do that instantly because understanding that that's molybdenum gives you an idea of a proxy of where you might be in your deposit and yeah. what the true scale of that opportunity could be. Mm -hmm. And and if you're not in the core of it, where do you gotta go to get to it? And yeah. so for the, him to be able to go that extra effort, and my guess is that he did it because it was a nice specimen. And because he well. enjoyed it, yeah. yeah. Um, some other cool ones that I got, so similar to that, this is just another one that is the full association, so it's cool. And it stands up on its own. But you've got anchorite coated quartzes, you've got doubly terminated, uh, uh, calcites with the molly coated pyrites and more anchorite. So again, that, that tells you a lot about the parogenesis of the deposit yeah. and all of the kind of unique features that came together to create one of the world's largest gold mines. And, and on top of that, you really get to see the, the multiple pulses, right? Because like, as we know, as geologists, you need like multiple pulses, multiple phases for a deposit to actually become something serious. Yes. And realistically, a deposit needs that to get mineralogically interesting. Exactly, and it needs that preparation and it needs that economy of scale so that someone actually can go in and mine it. And mm -hmm. folks like us get to enjoy the kind of byproduct yeah. often of that in these cases. And it's For the deposit, free. it's a absolutely flawless piece and it's got everything going on. You've got anchorite coated quartz with cal DT calcites all over it. On the back you can really see the anchorite on the quartz and those perfectly perched calcites. And then the black speckles, I'm not fully sure what they are at this point. Uh, I would have to definitely test it, but my guess is there's some sort of sulfa salt. 
which given is given where they're coming associated. out of, that would that exactly. would make sense. And so that is adorable. That one I really like. Oh yeah. Well, I think we should change your middle name to Bridge, <laughs> since you are bridging all of these different I don't know aspects about that, together, but, yeah. and and I think it's really important for this community at large that someone's passion is bringing these different parts together because that's how, you know, essentially these pillars are going to be able to lift each other up and bring more love for the minerals that we love. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Well, thank you so much thank for you. chatting with me and nerding out with me and sharing all this information. I appreciate it and I look forward to many more years now <laughs> of uh, getting out here in front of you guys and showing you some of the cool stuff I've been finding out on uh, my adventure. Great. Thank you so much.